Let's talk about for unlawful carnal knowledge in 1991. I mean, you want to go first on this one? Yeah, I'll go first on this one. So this one was a step up, in my opinion, from OU812. I agree. And, you know, just not a secret based on where my 5150 ranking is. Still doesn't even come close to that, in my opinion. Okay. But, again, this album is even longer than the last one. <laughs> it has better songs on it. Yeah. Like, significantly better songs. But it, again, felt so long to listen to. The intro starts off great. And I was like, whoa, we're getting a fun album again. And for the, you know, we do get a little bit more fun of an album. But overall, we don't. At the same time, we get another album with half filler songs half if not maybe slightly more yeah i mean personally i mean this is i really like this album it was a step up from the the um the i think to be honest i think van halen probably heard the criticisms of ou812 and they were like all right let's go back to the studio make a hard-hitting record personally but um i still really i like this this record quite a bit i mean we have and by the way so for those of you who are just keeping track on four unlawful carnal knowledge is abbreviated as I mean, I'm not gonna say it, but it's because I try to make my show kid friendly. But if you put the letters together, it spells that word, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny, but yes. I mean it's 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 totally Van Halen's you know thing. Um I gotta tell you, and also it says you should Ted Templeman returned as producer. Yeah, the production on is significantly better than OU812. Absolutely. We're both in agreement on that, um, but I I really like it. I mean, there's a, the, the, we're getting we're gonna get to one song in a second that I love. It's in my top twenty five all time. I'll get to it in a second. But like, there are some really great songs. There's some good songs. Some of that are kind of forgettable for me personally. But we'll get to them in a second. Let's get to the track listing of this, and I'll list them off for you guys at home or listening. Pound cake, like, hold on. Pound cake, Judgment Day, spanked. Run around, pleasure dome, in and out, man on a mission. The dream is over. Right now, three one six and top of the uh, three three sixteen and, and top of the world. Can I go first? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cool. First things first. The song Van H- Van Hagar's "Right Now" is in my top twenty five songs of all time. It is okay. interchanged with "When It's Love." I love that song so much. There is so much emotion, so much depth, a little bit darker in a sense for some aspects of Van Halen. But like, there's something about Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen playing piano for some reason that stands out to me. Like, but yeah, that's like the one, aside from Jump, which is keyboard, but like that's the one like piano song you can think of but that they did. And he's a brilliant composer. Aside from the guitar, he's a great composer. Oh, yeah. But like, you look at some of the track listing on these songs, like Pound Cake is five and a half minutes. What's the one I was looking at? Pleasure Dome is seven. Pleasure Dome is... I don't know your opinion on it. Pleasure Dome to me was awful. Yeah, we're on the same page. Listening to Pleasure Dome. We're on the same page. I mean, it's like, it's like, why would you make it something that seven minutes that's that? I don't know. The dream is over. I got to tell you, it's a little bit, I like it a lot. I mean, I, I, yeah, it's, I like it's a good one. I like it. Right now, I said it's in my top 25 of all time songs but in general. Top of the world is just fun. To me, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way Eddie's guitar intro just like starts, and it, 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 I think it's great. Um, all around, all around as a record, I do like it. I mean, the, like I said, right now is in my top twenty-five. I said that like three times. I think Pound Cake, I think, is really great. Um, okay. Eddie's playing a damn drill on Pound Cake. Yeah, and it sounds awesome. I mean, the track list overall, it's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. It has some really good, like Top of the World. Oh yeah, I would put that in the top tier of Van Halen songs. Pound Cake is good. Right, right now, I'm not as big a fan of it as you are. It's good. Um, mm-hmm. I like it. This album is definitely a pretty good comeback for me. Uh, I agree. In terms of the band, and it's 
definitely more fun than OU812 was. And I, I do agree. I think that they probably did take some of the criticism from that album into consideration here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it would be hard not to. I, I personally didn't really like that one. But man, some things, I don't know what was going on in their minds. Why they thought Pleasure Dome had to be seven minutes long. Or why or why in and out needed to be six minutes long. There's just so many examples of this at this stage in their career of songs being way longer than they needed to be. Yeah. And it and again, long songs aren't bad if they don't feel long. Because a good song won't feel that long. I mean, take take, you know, Jesus of Suburbia, Homecoming, whatever by Green Day. It doesn't feel like you're listening to the same song for nine minutes. Right. Take, you know, 20, you know, 2112 by Rush. 20 oh, yeah. plus minute song. You listen to it. You don't feel like you're listening to the same song for 20 plus minutes. Yeah. And, you know, you can make the argument, it's, oh, it's because all the songs that I listed are, have multiple parts to them. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't need full multiple like part songs. But at the end of the day, if you're going to make a long song, do something more interesting with it. I and I, I think that a lot of the songs that they were doing like that didn't have that aspect. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you said something that's pretty key. Like the, 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 the true nature of a good song is no matter how long it is, like you said, 2112 by Rush. Um, that's brilliant. I mean, yeah. you said you said Jesus Suburbia. I would echo like Free Bird. It's ten yeah. minutes long, but you know you stick with it. So, or even American Pie by Don McLean. I mean, oh, yeah. That. I mean that held the that held the record for being, I think it was the longest song to hit number one for decades until Taylor Swift just knocked it out with the ten minute version of All Too Well, which yeah, good for her. Great song. Yeah. But I agree. I, I, I second that. Yeah, she, she did a good job. Okay. That song is a perfect example because, it you know, full disclosure, I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> but that song, when you listen to it, and this is coming from someone that wasn't a big fan of All Too Well in the first place, the original shorter version, it doesn't feel like I'm listening to the same song for 10 minutes. Yeah. It doesn't feel that long. You stick with it and you don't really realize it. And that's, that's the key of a good song is you can have a song that's 30 seconds. I know some songs that are 30 seconds long and they're just as good as a song that's three minutes, five minutes, nine minutes long. It doesn't yeah. matter the length. What matters is what you do with it and they don't do anything good with it. I completely agree with you. I'm, I mean, Built This Pool by Blink-182 we talked about last time. Exactly. I mean, that's like, what, 15 seconds and it's brilliant. Yeah, it's like a 15 second song. But it's funny and it works. It's you know, and it's catchy. Exactly. Now, I want to see the naked dude. It's funny. Um, well, where would you rank for unlawful carnal knowledge? So I would put this one one step above OU812. So I put it at number 10. Okay. I personally, and I this I like I said, I made my list yesterday or the day before. When I, was, when I was listening to all these albums, you might think I'm crazy for saying this. I actually, because because of the because a couple of factors led into this decision of putting it at number four, okay. because it was the return of ten, t- Ted Templeman number one. And I'm looking at Wikipedia, refresh my memory. And he produced a lot of the the first like was it first six Van Halen albums, whatever. All of them up until fifty one fifty. Yeah, correct. Yeah, his return I think added something to the mix. Mm-hmm. Um, Another key factor in that choice, yeah, was right now for me personally. But yeah, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say it definitely sounds like a Van Halen album again. Yeah, exactly. And like Sammy Hagar, like it's a little. It's, some of the songs are dark. I mean, like I, I like I keep pointing out right now, but like right now, it's still used today for like sports games and whatnot. Yeah. Like I mean, it's just it still is used for like I'll give you an example. Like, I, was at, I was at a lacrosse meet for my cousins at one point. And they're playing Van Halen. Like, it's not playing like, you know, pop like Kendrick Lamar or whatever. They're playing right now by Van Halen. I'm like, oh, all right, sweet. Okay. So it just, I think that one stood up for a lot of people. I mean, that is like the, the big hit single off the album too, but because yeah. the rest of the albums are like seven minutes long, but whatever. 
<laughs> but I mean, I put it number four because, like I said, the return of Ted Templeman, uh, I, I right now is in my top 25 songs of all time. I think it's a brilliant track, personally. And Top of the World's fun, you know, in and out, you know, whatever. But like, there are good songs on this album that I like quite a bit. And that's why I put it number four. It's very, it's a good album. There's, there's only two Van Halen albums that would categorize as bad. And we already talked about one of them. Yeah. 